Okay, uh, today I am going to share with you uh, what should be done if you have missing data problem in your time series data. So here I have um, one variable called as GDP from 2004 to 2017 and if you look at this, when I open up the GDP value, the data here is NA. NA here means not available. So what if it happens to your data? What should be done? Should you ignore or should you don't, don't have to ignore? Okay. Uh, the NA, uh, if you're going to settle this, the missing data problem, you can settle by using forecasting or interpolation. But before I start towards uh, explaining how to do the missing or how to do the forecast and uh, interpolation, uh, please subscribe to my channel so that you can help me as well. Alright, uh, the NA, the, the forecasting can only be done if, if the NA is at the end of the data. So one or two or three, one or two or three. So in this case, since the data is very short period of time, therefore the NA is only one. So you can use forecast. But what if the NA is above, higher? When the NA is at the earlier part, you also can do, um, you can also treat the missing data at the earlier part. We can use backcasting. So this one is the forecasting. This one is the backcasting. But if the missing data is in the middle, then uh, in that case, you can do some interpolation. Okay, so first step, I will show you what to do if the data, the missing data is at the end. The, the missing data, you can use forecasting if the missing data is only one or two out of the whole data set, but not many. Yeah? Because if you have many, for example, you have data from 2004 to 2010. These are all data, but these are all NA. In that case, you cannot use forecasting because it will lead to bias estimation, right? So, uh, if only one, then you can use forecasting. So, the step to do forecasting is like this. Um, first, you need to know where is the missing data. So, we have the sample from 2004 to 2017 and the missing data is at 2017 only. So, let's close this. Okay. So we have missing data in 2017 and we have available data from 2004 to 2016. So close this and then what you have to do is double click the sample. And then uh, by default, eViews will put at all. At all means they will include all sample, sample including the missing data. So here please change the sample range uh, only on the years that have available information. So in my case just now, I have available data from 2004 to 2016 only. Okay, just change this, then OK. Right, once you have done this, uh, you can do the forecasting by using uh, AR, autoregressive. So you go to quick estimate equation. Okay, quick estimate equation. So I want to forecast the GDP. Right, so I want to forecast the GDP. So what should I do is GDP is my y variable, independent uh, sorry dependent variable, and then C is a constant, and then we put AR one. AR one stands for auto regressive. Okay, GDP, C, and AR one. Why GDP? Because I want to forecast the end period of GDP. Okay, then you just click OK. Right. Take note here, the main important point here is this. The AR1, make sure that your AR1, the probability is significant. Okay, uh, how to know it is significant? Because the p-value here is less than 5% alpha, less than 0 0.05. Therefore, we can say the AR1 is significant. If you found this is not significant, then you cannot proceed to the next level. So, since this is significant, therefore, you can forecast. So to forecast, you click forecast here, forecast, and then they will forecast, you have to forecast the GDP, but uh, with forecasted GDP. That's why the name is GDPF. F is for forecasted. And then the forecast sample, you include together with the missing data. So the missing data, the, the actual data is from 2004 to 2017, including the one year of missing data. So put here. 2004 to 2017 and then you just click OK right so once you have done this automatically eViews will give you another GDPF 
they will create you another GDPF, right? So here, uh, we have the GDP value and we also have the GDPF value. So if you open up the GDPF, automatically, the GDPF will give you the, the forecasted value for 2017. So if I open side by side, uh, the forecasted, they, they actually forecast the, these are all the forecasted value. And you can use 4.60 to be here, part of this, as the forecasted value in the actual data set, right? So that is uh, on how to do the uh, forecast, right? Again, the forecast here is only available, is only good if you only have one or two values which don't have any uh, data or missing values. That is the role of the forecast. But what if the NA is not here? What if the NA is above? For example, here, uh, let, let's let's take a look at GDPF here. If you look at the GDPF here, this is just the forecasted, but I, I give example on this. Let's say this is your actual data. Your actual data whereby you have all the data except one missing value at 2004. So, what to do here, you can also forecast the 2004. How you do it? You have to change uh, the, you have to change the outlook. 2017 will be upper, higher, and then this should be lower. You got what I mean? So, in example is, let's say I copy this. Uh, no, sorry. I copy this. Copy as uh, text. And then we go to Excel file. You paste in Excel file like this. And you see here, there is one missing value at the above part. So what should you do is, uh, you have to sort this, sort this data. Data, and then you sort. I want this 4.6 at the above and this one at the below. Meaning I have to sort by uh, the year sort by column a in uh in largest to smallest okay so we have to sort like this whereby the missing data or the missing value should be at the end of the data set and then based on this you can bring this again to the e views and ask the e views to forecast again same concept same uh, way on how you do it uh previously okay so hope it helps uh, please don't forget to subscribe my channel. Thank you.